Hello there, Full Size here with another Rust Electronics video. Today, I'm going to be showing you a modification of my previously posted Infinite Power Circuit. The Infinite Power Circuit is designed to automatically switch over to a backup power supply when your main power source fails. In the case of solar panels, this could simply mean that it's late evening, early morning, or nighttime. Or, in the case of something like a wind turbine, it could mean that the wind is not blowing hard enough to give you sufficient power to run your circuit. Or, in the case of both, it could simply mean that someone has destroyed your power generators in an effort to try and raid your base. This is a far more viable raiding tactic now that auto turrets require electricity. After I'm done with the modification of the infinite power circuit, I'm also going to go over how to set up and use the various outputs from the new auto turret electronic system. For the circuit today, you're going to need a wire tool, a small rechargeable battery, a small generator, three electrical branches, a counter, an OR switch, and a blocker. You don't necessarily need the counter, I'm simply using it to demonstrate the voltage output from the circuit. However, I typically put counters in my circuits in various places to check for problems in case part of the system is destroyed. To begin the build, we're going to put down the battery and then the small generator. By default, the generator tries to place in this orientation with the tires on the left hand side. If you press the R key twice, it'll rotate the generator around till the tires are on the right hand side. This is preferable for every build because that puts the terminals on the closer side to you. Otherwise, you'd be trying to connect to these terminals while they run the back side of the machine from you. Next, we need our three electrical branches, and you can just put them in a line above the battery. Now, it doesn't matter how you arrange these components, I'm simply putting them in this order to make it very clear where each of the wires is run. Then your blocker, your OR switch, and finally the counter. This counter here is only showing the power that I'm collecting from my solar panels. This electrical branch is only here so that I can configure the input power to demonstrate that the circuit can operate on various voltages and what will happen if it falls below the recommended voltage. From whatever your power source is, it could simply be run from this root combiner or directly from a windmill. You want to run your power input to the power in of the middle electrical branch. Also, you want to set the branch power on this electrical branch to 43 volts. Now the branch power from there goes to the input of the top electrical branch, and then the power out goes to the input of the bottom electrical branch. Many parts of this circuit are very similar to the infinite power circuit I showed in the previous video. However, there are slight modifications. The branch power output from this electrical branch will go to the block pass-through on the blocker, and then the power out will go to the power in on the battery power out on the battery goes to the power in on the blocker and then the power out from the blocker is going to go to the force start on the generator. Now what this will do is where the circuit would automatically switch over to battery power before instead it's going to automatically start the generator. It only requires one volt of power to the force start terminal to start the generator. Now back up to the top electrical branch the power out is going to go to one of the power inputs on the OR switch, and then the branch out will route this over here to the generator, and that's going to go to the force stop on the generator. Now the power out from the generator is going to go to the other input terminal on the OR switch. And then finally the power out from the OR switch goes to the power in on the counter. Hold E while pointing at the counter and select Show Pass-Through. Now the last thing we need to do is put fuel in the generator. Pointing at the generator, hold the E key and then select Open. Now I have a thousand fuel and I right click the entire stack but only 500 went in. This is the maximum amount that you can put in the generator on vanilla. Now I specify that because on modded servers one of the first things to be modded is stack size. I typically play on 5x modded servers. The lowest low grade stack size I can think of on any of those servers is 10,000. This circuit isn't necessarily better than an infinite power circuit 
using a large rechargeable battery. The large rechargeable battery holds about five hours of charge time. This generator with vanilla stack limits will only supply power to your circuit for two hours and five minutes as it burns four fuel per minute. That said, on a modded server, like the ones I usually play on, along with tens of thousands of other Rust players, the stack sizes are significantly higher. On that lowest stack size server that I was speaking about, with 10,000 low grade in a stack, the generator could run for 42 hours, making it far better than the large rechargeable battery that can only run for 5 hours. So keep that in mind. The only reason to use the generator over a large rechargeable battery on vanilla is if you don't have a large rechargeable battery. But on modded servers with modded stack sizes to the low grade, it could last far longer than the large rechargeable battery. The other thing to note about the generator is it only outputs 40 volts, where the large rechargeable battery outputs 100 volts. The small battery, on the other hand, through this circuit, only outputs 8 volts. Well, it outputs 10 volts, but the usable power is only 8 volts. So the generator could be more viable than a small or large battery given the situation. Either you need more voltage than the small battery can put out, or you need longer durability and have higher stack limits than what you could get out of the large battery. So let's see how this works now. Again, this electrical branch is not necessary for the circuit. It's simply here to show what happens with various voltage inputs. Right now, I have 60 volts input to the circuit from the solar panels. I have restricted that power to 50 volts using this electrical branch because 50 volts will allow you to not only have your 39 volt output, but also several volts left over to charge your small rechargeable battery. If I reduce the voltage to 45 volts, it automatically turns on the generator. Indicated by this green light, the generator is now supplying the voltage to the circuit. The main line is still supplying voltage, but it's one volt short of the cutoff point, which allows a 39 volt output. If I increase the voltage to 46 volts, the generator turns off and is now only supplying power through the main line. The problem with only having 46 volts is it doesn't leave one single extra volt to charge your small battery. So you should definitely have at least 47 volts for the circuit. At only 47 volts, it will very slowly charge the battery and supply your mainline power. So what can we do with 39 volts? Well, as I mentioned before, I wanted to go over the new electronics with the auto turrets. The auto turrets now have a power in, a has target, low ammo, and no ammo output. In order to activate the auto turret at all, you must supply at least 10 volts of power. In order to get an output, you need to supply at least 11 volts. Now, each of these outputs will supply a 1 volt output if its condition is met. So from our 39 volt output, I'm going to run that over to this electrical branch. This electrical branch is not strictly necessary, nor is this counter. They're simply here to demonstrate that there's actually two extra volts left over that you could use for something else. There's not much you can do with two volts, but you could put up a ceiling light or something. From the electrical branch, I have the branch power set to 35 volts, and that power is run into this switch. You definitely need a switch in your circuits now in front of your auto turrets, because you can't access their inventory to add ammunition unless the turret is powered off. I'm going to go ahead and put 51 bullets into this auto turret. From the power out of the switch, I run that into a splitter, and I don't typically use splitters because splitters have a tendency to waste power because they split the power evenly between all three outputs. In this case though, I have three identical sub-circuits of the auto turret. So I've already set two of these up, you can kind of see what's going on here, but I'm going to set this one up from scratch just to be sure it's clear what I've done. From the power output of the splitter, I'm going to run that to the power in on the turret. Then, from the has target output, I'm going to run that to a broadcaster. The broadcaster is set to a frequency, and then I have a pager in my inventory set to the same frequency. The low ammunition I'll run to this blue flasher light, and the no ammunition I'll run to the red flasher light. Finally, I need to authorize on the turret, and then I'm going to disconnect these other two so that they don't confuse what we're doing. Now if I turn the power on, and because I'm authorized it doesn't consider me a target. Also, I'm not getting a signal from the broadcaster, and neither of these two lights is on. If I access the inventory and take out one single bullet, leaving it with 50 ammunition left, and then turn it back on, the low ammunition indicator is flashing. If I turn it off again and pull out all of the ammunition, now the low ammunition and no ammunition indicators are flashing. I believe that this may be an incorrect output because low ammunition is by no means the same as no ammunition. I don't think it really matters too much in the long run. It's simply important to understand that if you have no ammunition in the turret, 
the low ammunition indicator will also activate. Now I'm going to turn it off again and clear authorization so that it will consider me a target when it's turned on. Now when I turn it on, it takes a moment to start up and now it's targeting me. You can tell because it's tracking me. It sends a signal out on the has target output to the broadcaster and the broadcaster sends a signal to my RF pager. This could be incredibly useful. First, it could let you know anywhere on the map that someone is at your base. Now, this could mean that you need to prepare to defend your base, or it could simply mean that someone is straight too close to your turret and you need to go and collect whatever loot they've lost. In either case, I can't think of a better use for the has target output than an RF broadcaster. That does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And we'll see you again in the near future with more Rust Electronics videos.